With a finish. In second place, from Texas, Michael Walker.
Dennis and Law. This is Phoenix. We will take a lunch break from 1 to 2 o'clock this afternoon.
Okay, we've got Peter Bargatos in the red and Roland Farrar in the blue. Herbert, this is a classic here. We got uh, Roland Farrar, who hasn't competed in four years, is coming back, trying to make the national team to fight in the world championships. And Peter, a relative newcomer, second year on the circuit, and here he is in the final. How do you like him? Well, Peter's got a little bit of an advantage. Peter's been working with me for the past half a year or so, and uh, Roland and I competed in 1988, but Roland's really strong. And it's going to be an Peter seems to be a little bit more uh, offensive than Roland right now as far as the styles go. Uh, a little bit more aggressive, seems to have a height advantage. Um, have you fought Peter before in a tournament, Herb? Sure, uh, Peter and I competed along the way on the way up uh, to my 99-2 to game. 
But uh, Peter, I'm surprised he's being aggressive because Mark Williams is a relatively uh, defensive coach. And very, very basic fight. Usually is what he prescribes for most of his players. You know, I, uh, I was watching Roland in some of the, his elimination matches, and it really seemed to me that uh, he was really going after it. I thought when I first uh, saw him earlier that he was going to depend on experience and timing and maybe try to steal a few matches, but I've seen him coming off the line all day long, fighting pretty hard. It's four-year vac you know, vacation, really. He needs to come out and do some interesting stuff, and he's doing that. He's fighting a strong, hard fight. He's dominating his opponents for the most part, and I, but I think he's really met a match here in Peter. Um, Peter seems to be holding his own also. Seems to be a pretty straight up game. I mean, uh, not too many spins. There's one, but both players pretty much just push kicks and roundhouse kicks and punches and uh, not, not too much fluff. Just uh, let's stand toe to toe and get the job done. In some sense, they both come from the, uh, they come, both come from the same school. They come from the, uh, the new U.S. Taekwondo school method of training and certainly the fighting strategies where it's kind of a go ahead, go forward sort of fight, basic round kick and then see what you can take out of it with that. Okay. And that's the uh, Who would you give an edge to, Herb? I'd have to give the edge to the night round to Roland. Roland seemed to be coming forward. He had Peter off balance a number of times, and he was following up with nice uh, two and three kicks. Peter is fighting just a bit more defensively and depending more on single combinations. So if it continues like that, it's really going to be Roland's game. What's Peter going to have to do to overcome that then? What's he got to do to win this match? He's going to have to kick off the line. He's going to have to take a stepping kick when he starts getting Roland to move back, but he's definitely going to have to get Roland to move back just a bit. Roland, on the other hand, is going to have to keep working the science. He's going to have to kick, get Peter to step back. He's going to have to hit him once and twice, and he's going to have to finish last. Whoever finishes last in the combinations is going to win this fight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're at the final of the 1993 National Championships in the men's middleweight division. All right, and here we are at the beginning of round number two in this men's middleweight final at the national championships here in St. Paul, Minnesota. That's one thing we haven't seen uh, from the middleweights as much as the lighter weight divisions is the players going towards uh, the, the head as much. Uh, I think that may have been the first kick toward head. Oh, and there's a good left crescent kick to the head. Messes up the head, Hogu, of Peter. Would the judges score that, Herb? No. Okay, uh, we've got Roland Farrar just coming real hard off the line. It seems that he's picking his chances perfectly. Yeah, Roland, is, that was a beautiful point he just scored. He went real basic. He didn't get complicated. He saw the opportunity. He scored the point, and then he covered and then prevented Peter from countering. That's the way you fight Taekwondo. At least that's the way you fight a smart Taekwondo game. Now... It seems that Roland's been a, in a few finals before, and uh, I think that might give him an advantage. He looks very comfortable in this final. He's very comfortable shutting him down. Uh, good shot there. Probably no point. There's a punch and a trip. Well, Peter's a, Peter, to his benefit, is a, is a big game fighter. Most times that I've seen Peter lose, it's been to uh, people of lesser caliber. He certainly has a worthy opponent here. Roland, on the other hand, Roland certainly has had his share of big games. He was at the 88 Olympic trials. Um, he's been a national champion. He's had a lot of pressure. He's fought some of the best. You know, um, he fought Naeem Hassan and a number of the other top middleweight competitors. So, yeah, Roland is definitely in his element here. Well, I think uh, I can remember watching you and Roland having a couple of good matches too, Herb. Yeah. Roland was, you know, definitely one of my main concerns going into the 88 trials and certainly along my uh, road towards the 92 games. Roland's a wonderful competitor, has a lot of talent, and certainly has a lot of heart. Yeah. Uh, I've known Roland a long time. The guy is an absolute gentleman outside of the ring. And that's the conclusion of round number two. Close game. Okay, here we go. Round three of the 1993 National Championships. The gold medal in the, men in the men's middleweight division online here. This is Jay Wark. I'm live with Herb Perez. And we're calling this match. And here we go. Herb, it seems that uh, Roland has clearly got the best of the first two rounds. What's Peter got to do to get this match now? He's going to need a couple of big points, isn't he? Peter's going to have to kick off the line. He's going to have to shut Roland down, much like he tried there. And if he gets shut down by Peter, I mean by Roland, he's definitely going to have to throw a second or a third kick in combination to make it happen. But he, he, Roland's got a very smart 
opponent there in Roland, and Roland knows how to shut him down as he's doing real well. You know, I kind of agree. It seems that Roland's doing one kick, and then before Peter can get his counter off, he's tying him up, and he's just not giving Peter a chance to do two or three kicks. It's, a, it, it's I'm going to kick once or twice, and you're going to kick once, maybe. Well, that's a traditional, you know, certainly that's a traditional 88 game through, you know, up until 88, and it's working well for Roland. Peter has never experienced that game, and he's having a lot of trouble with it. It certainly doesn't mirror the new game, which 92 is certainly. That's a nice, that's a nice right roundhouse kick by Peter. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I'm not sure they're going to score it, though. It wasn't, didn't seem like it was strong enough. But certainly, um, there you go. I think, uh, I think we're going to have to write that one down. Yeah, it looks like the referees pretty much took a vacation. I saw four judges, and uh, Roland certainly didn't contest it. That's going to have an impact on this match. Yeah, well, let's hope it's enough. Uh, it's certainly going to be a close match, and depending who can pull out in this last minute and a half is definitely going to make the decision here. Yes, Peters looks like he's in a good mood. Looks like he's feeling strong. Roland, however, there, he's still getting a little tired. Let's see what he's got left for the end. That might have been the point that uh, Peter needed a little bit earlier to give him the confidence to uh, fight with a little more uh, spirit. Because uh, right now, it's, it, it's almost like he made a huge transition. Well, Roland's looking a little tired and perhaps a little bit hurt here. And this has always been a problem of Roland's uh, towards the end of the match. And let's see if he can overcome it this time. Yeah, definitely Peter's got the youth advantage and there's going to be a little bit stronger. Oh, that's a good try. I don't think it'll be a point. Shouldn't be a point on either side, but, you know, anything can happen out there. Again, I think that's the, uh, th that's the experience of Roland Farrar. He threw that hook kick once in the first round, then saved it for the last half of the third round. It's definitely a good choice uh, as far as technique goes, and selection is what it's all about. There he's following up with a nice fast kick, and that certainly was one of his trademarks throughout the years. Yeah, Roland's, Roland's got that fast left leg, and uh, he uses it inside, outside. That was, uh, that was some incidental contact. Uh, the judge will, or the referee will correctly give uh, Roland for our warning. Uh, Roland, it was uh, clearly unintentional. Uh, unintentional. Then we're fighting again. Nope. Well, Peter certainly missed a chance there, and he's going to try to sneak out an extra point there. But if he had sat on that back kick just a half step longer, he probably could have scored it. He's going to need to work a trap after that, because Roland's certainly moving out of the way and covering. You know, I'm really impressed at how active these two middleweights have been. Both these guys are very serious about wanting to win this, and that's it. All right, and here we are with the decision. And here we go, and it looks like, yes, hung. It was a close match, but Peter certainly put out a lot of energy, and I think he took it away in the third round, because certainly the first two rounds belonged to Roland. Hello, and we're at the national championships with the men's middleweight gold medalist, Peter Baratos from New, from New York. Peter, congratulations. That was an awesome match. Um, Roland Farrar, your opponent. The guy's been around a long time. He's making a comeback, a ton of experience. What were you thinking going into the final? Uh, I was kind of nervous at first, but working with her, Perez and Mark Williams, I felt more confident. So, well, I was, I was just thinking that uh, Mark is faster than uh, anybody at Nationals. Her Perez is stronger and smarter. So I just felt like nobody could beat me then. I was working with them a lot. So it was preparation and your coaches gave you the confidence you needed. Well, that's awesome. How's it feel to be a national champion? Feels really good. I've been fighting, this is my fourth Nationals. I had a uh, national curse for like three years. This is my first, first time I won, so. Okay, we've got uh, the Olympic Festival coming up. We've got the World Championships. But before all that, we've got the Olympic Trials. What are you going to do to get ready? Because you've got to fight these guys one more time again in two weeks. Well, first I've got to ice my feet. <laughs> Just keep training with uh, Herb and Mark. That's it. Okay. Uh, do you got the goal for uh, the gold medal in uh, the Garden at the World Championships? Did I get it? No. Is that in your mind? Are you thinking about uh, New York? Well, step by step. First, I'm thinking of team draws. Then, from then. Okay, hey, awesome game. Congratulations. Well, once you reach this level, this is where the money's at. Uh, the preliminaries, it's tough, it's tiresome, but this is the final match. They get a little bit of time to rest, and this is where actually the pressure hits. This is where they got to psych themselves. Okay, first round is underway, folks. We've got Nikki coming out like a little bit of checking. Gonna feel each other out in this first 30 seconds, I, I suppose, Tim. Yeah, Emery is very much a front leg fighter, so he's gonna use a lot of motion, a lot of steps, whereas Nikki is a very defensive fighter. 
and calm, very calm fighter, so you won't see a lot of motion. You'll see a few checks, but he knows what he's going to do already. And Nikki's being coached by a uh, 1980 Olympic gold medalist in the lightweight division, Park Bung Kwan. Right, Park Bung Kwan is a very famous fighter and also has been world championship uh, gold medalist at the lightweight division. And uh, yeah, has a lot of knowledge in this division. Emery Rowe is being coached by uh, one of the Illinois coaches, who is also a former Korean team member. Uh, I'm, his name slips me right now. Both fighters are exchanging a little bit, uh, trying to get the uh, upper hand here, Tim. Yeah, it looks like Nikki's starting off a little slow, trying to find out exactly how Emery's going to fight and uh, kind of just checking him and get a few motions. That way he can set him up for his uh, little more advanced techniques to score some clean points. Well, I know Nikki likes to cut kick as Bong Kwan uh, was one of his trademarks. So uh, uh, we're going to see an interesting fight here. Emery's maybe a little more awkward of a fighter, but he's had very good success today. Nice back kick, nice back kick. Uh, did that score, Tim, do you think? Uh, I don't know. There wasn't a lot of full motion in that kick. I don't know if the judges are going to consider that trembling shot. But as you can see, Nicky is using a lot of cut leg because Emery is a front leg fighter. He can kind of shut down his front leg and follow up with the uh, rear leg to use the trembling shot to actually score that point. And we see uh, Nicky received a uh, kyungo or a warning for running out of the ring there. Now, uh, one warning lets you slip by, but two, you lose a point. Right now, there's wow. a trap back kick. Nice trap back kick. That should have been scored a point. As you can see, the, most of the judges have wrote that one down. That was trembling shot. Emery knew it, maybe. He came back like a fury, and Nikki was able to evade. Uh, I think both fighters are still trying to find the comfortability, and that was an interesting technique that Emery just threw. He uh, knocked Nikki to the ground, and he's getting a standing eight count, Tim. Right. Anytime the athlete receives a kick, no, where, no matter where it is on the body, if they fall down, the judge must give them an eight count. Okay, it looks like a real close first round, possibly a 1-1 one -one score at this time. Right, as you can watch the fighters, you can tell how Nikki is a little more conserved fighter and Emery is going to attack more. But as the rounds go on, we'll watch that. We'll watch as Nikki gains a little momentum and picks up on his fight game. Okay, both fighters were clinching there. Once again, clinching is not allowed in the uh, Taekwondo competition any longer. And uh, they were calling clinching today earlier, Tim, so we'll have to watch out for that warning. Okay, we're at the end of the first round, and uh, what are your thoughts on that first round, Tim? Well, the first round looks like each fighter was kind of filling each other out, and they played a very defensive match. It was very defensive, uh, a lot of cut kicks, and as you see, Emery was using his front leg to kind of check uh, Nick. Nick would move back and try to set up. Now, as the second round comes in, we'll see each fighter using a little more strategy and picking out techniques from what they felt out in the first round. Okay, I'm really excited to get into the second round, so here we're about ready to go. Ready to begin here. Okay, Tim, we're getting ready to start the second round here. Uh, I predict a 1-1 score. Uh, what are your feelings here starting this beginning of the second round uh, for these two? Because Nikki Tersenak did receive that standing eight count, I'd also say they're probably scoring the match 1-1. One one. Okay, here we go, folks. First part of the second round. Nikki gets off a very nice rear side roundhouse kick. Right, as you can see now, Nikki is finding out that Emery Rowe is using his front leg a lot, so he's going to try to use the back leg to the kidney to kind of shut down his momentum. And Emery is going to try to have to use a little more side motion now if he's going to set something up. Looks like they're picking up the pace a little bit in this second round. Long kick by Nikki, missed. Right, they both know it's a tie game and then someone's going to have to score a point because they don't want to be behind when it goes into the third round. They don't want to play catch up. Red was chasing Blue a little bit there. Blue did get on the Hogu. Uh, maybe a point, maybe not. Okay, both, both players are checking each other, trying to set up a new strategy now. That's what's great about Taekwondo is that, you know, you can have one strategy going in the first round and if you feel that something's not working, you can completely change your game in the same round. Well, Nikki's moving extremely well this round. He's making Emery miss a lot and that's going to take its toll in the third round when they start uh, getting a little bit tired. Sure, Emery's using a lot of direct attack and Nikki's using a lot of side motion, which is, makes the, to score a point makes it very difficult. See, now hopefully Nikki, I think, is going to check and try to... Uh, what we use what we call a fast kick. He's going to try to go to the open side and score a clean point. Oh, 
It was a long hook kick. Just missed with that hook kick. And uh, he's thinking those roundhouse kicks in. I think they're taking a the toll on Emery, but uh, Emery's a game fighter. He's, I watched his fights earlier, uh, Tim. He, he mixes it up well. Right, he likes, like I said, he likes to use that front leg, but he won't back off. He's gonna come at you every time. Well, both these fighters are uh, qualified already for these team trials that are in uh, Chicago in two weeks. Now, uh, Emery's a little bit upset, it looks like, at that kick, but it was on the oblique of the, of the uh, hogu there, so it was a legal technique. Right, he did catch part of the hogu. It was a little low, but he did catch the hogu, so he won't get a warning for that. We've got a good match here. We've got a good match. Both, uh, both players are starting to open it up a little bit. They know this is uh, kind of a sight game. Who wins this is going to have some momentum going into that team trial uh, situation next uh, in two weeks in Chicago there, nice, Tim. Nice cut back kick by Nicky there. As you saw that, uh, he caught the hip and came around. Emery did a little side step, but it was a nice technique. Those are the kind of techniques that score the clean points. Those are the ones we have to see. Now Beautiful here. axe kick from Emery. Now that was a big point, Tim. Yes, you can, as you can saw, the headgear move. Uh, his head down, that's a clean point. Clean head attack. Okay, now it's going back and forth. This is not an easy fight for either of these guys. Uh, obviously, neither one are laying down for the other, so this is what we like to see. These guys know they're gonna meet each other in two weeks, Tim, so uh, what, what does this mean to the winner tonight? Tonight is the first step to that team trials. We have the World Championship team. The team trials are gonna be the World Championships. Uh, World Championships haven't been held in the United States since, I believe, Chicago, is that correct? That's right, 1977, Tim. Sure. Um, so this will be the first time in, to fight on home ground, the World Championships. There's, this is going to be a battle. World Championship uh, team trials is going to be a battle. It's going to be some exciting matches. Good year to make the team, folks. Good year. Well, we're about ready to start this third round, so uh, sit by your chairs. we got an even fight here, and it, it could be anybody's game. I think, Tim, whoever wins this third round is going to win the fight. Would you agree? I'd agree. I think uh, the score is very close, and what's going to happen here, uh, I believe after that last headshot, it's possible that Nicky might think he's behind. If that's the case, we're going to see what type of calm fighter he is. A lot of fighters might lose their head, come out, and get a little bit of aggressive. Okay, here we go with the third round. Where? There we go. And here we go, Tim. Third round. This is what we call some way jump. This is, this is the third round. This is where the action's gonna be. This is, because of the score, this is gonna turn, determine who is the winner tonight, who's gonna be the national champion in the lightweight division. Well, we've had a wonderful fight up to now, folks, so let's see what happens. Both players coming out gunning. Both players coming out gunning, and Emery looks like he's on a roll, Tim. He sure is. He's coming out strong, and he's not backing off. His techniques are coming very strong. He's throwing with confidence. Whether the technique is awkward or, or there, the confidence you throw a technique with can make all the difference. Well, both players are grabbing a little bit there. They better be careful or they're gonna get a warning. Okay, we got a warning to uh, red. Referee caught red, he, although blue was grabbing also. Now well, that was a nice, uh, nice kick by Nikki. There's a roundhouse kick, kick that he yeah. caught right off the line when Emery moved. Uh, as you can see, the momentum's picked up. These both are experienced fighters, and a good experienced fighter knows that the third round is the last round that the referees remember. That's right, I've seen many fights today won or lost in this third round. Oh, beautiful spinning hook kick in the air there by Nikki. possible point. I don't know if the judges are marking it, but it sure was pretty. Might have to see that one in slow motion. Yeah, the aerial techniques are very beautiful, and any shot like that to the head, if you turn the head, can almost guarantee that the judges are going to score as a point, which is a safe way to score a point, because you don't have to wonder, did I score a point or not? Well, Emery is a little desperation, possibly. He's uh, trying to pull out all the uh, tricks in his bag here tonight, Tim, and uh, we're rolling it down to the uh, about the uh, last minute of the round. He just took another warning, which means he may lose half a point, or would that be a full point? Well, if he had two warnings there, his two warnings will equal one deduction, so that will hurt him at the final score. Two deductions will make one point. Okay, don't forget that, folks. We've got two deductions to red and one deduction or one warning to blue. So uh, the referee is playing a little part in this match also. Right. You notice that Emery is coming out strong. He seems to be a little bit tighter, tired now. And Nicky is using a lot oh, of Oh, beautiful Ooh. double kick. And you can see it in Emery's eyes. He, heard, he felt that one, and you can hear that from the cheap seats. That was a beautiful, he's getting a standing eight count. 
That may be turn the tide that turned the fight, Tim. Yeah, a kick like that can definitely take the fight out of a fighter if it's to the solar flex. Can definitely take the fight out of a fighter. Okay, we're rolling down in this fight here. Whose game is it? As you can see, Emery is definitely looking tired. This game could be Nicky's if he keeps up the momentum there. Nicky's waiting for a clean point. Nicky is uh, evading a little bit, backing up. He thinks he's got the match. He's looking for a point. What's going to happen, folks? Yeah, I'm sure Nicky is thinking that that was the point he cleaned up with there. Now, if he just fights a strong, confident fight, he can keep the lead, and he can finish this match as the new 1993 national lightweight champion. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the third round. Now we're just going to be waiting for the judge's decision. It was a great fight, Tim, and we're going to wait for that decision. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have the decision, and Timmy, I'll let you call that. Well, we'll see here. It's up to the judges. They're all three close rounds. And it's Nick Tersinak. Nick Tersinak, Missoula, Montana, the 1993 lightweight national taekwondo champion from St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm Scott Moranti and Tim Connolly. Thanking you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure working with you, Scott. Well, we're here. Uh, we're here with a victorious Nick Tristianak from Missoula, Montana. And Nick, uh, you did a heck of a job tonight. Why don't you give us a few thoughts about the fight? Tell us what went on in there tonight. Well, uh, I knew I knew I had an awkward person to, to fight against. It was uh, a little bit unorthodox, not quite what I'm used to fighting. So there's a few other skills needed to keep up with something like that. Well, you did really well. You uh, looks like you had a hard two rounds there in the beginning, pretty even fight, and then at the at the end of the third round there, you had a good double kick that I think sealed the fight for you. Timmy, I know here wants to ask you a couple questions. As you know, he was one of your uh, lightweight uh, predecessors in the division, and uh, he wants to ask you a couple questions. Sure, I know Nick's been at it for quite a while now, and uh, now a national champion. How does it feel to be a national champion? I want to keep doing it and doing it. I, I <laughs> the first time for me and. Um, it's such a rush. I, I I don't believe that it's happened right so now. How do you I, feel about possibly being the lightweight contender for the world championships in New York? That's that's my goal for this year. Uh, it's been my goal since I was about 12 years old, and that's been my goal. So uh, hopefully I can do it. Right. Okay, Look two forward to seeing two weeks round. two weeks in Chicago, folks. Thank you very much, Scott Moranti with uh, Tim Conley. We're here with Nick Tershiak, the 1993 lightweight United States national taekwondo champion.
And we're uh, starting the second round of our women's finweight division, Lynette. Kiko Kakuptan in the blue against uh, Park. Uh, what's Park's first name is in the red there, Lynette? Stephanie, Stephanie Park, and uh, she came out strong this round. It looked like Kiko was winning at the end of the last round, uh, the first round. But uh, it looks like Stephanie's coming back and getting a lot more aggressive. Well, uh, we have a very... Uh, Active little uh, match going here, folks. Uh, these gals are after it now. Once again, the uh, the park girl is the uh, daughter of the tournament director, so she's uh, trying to score one for the home crowd here. I think it seems though that Kiko has a lot more technique, and she's able to get her kicks up. Stephanie seems to be kicking a lot more, but they're very low kicks, and she's not scoring, and she's getting tired a lot faster, and she's not able to reach it because Kiko's moving around, and she's very good. She's very good with the ring. She just got a nice underkick there, that, and another face kick. I think Kiko's doing very well in this round, a lot better than Stephanie. Well, Kiko is uh, from Sacramento, California. Her coach is Mr. Jay Warwick. Finishing up the second round of this women's greenweight fight, give us your overall view of this, uh, this round, Lynette. Well, I think they're both very aggressive, but Kiko, even though she's moving back, she's able to score the points and get in where she needs to. And Stephanie is chasing her, but she's not able to pick her leg up when she gets there, and she looks kind of tired. She's walking in right now, and that's not good. That's not a good sign at all. But Kiko's able to get those kicks. But Stephanie just got a very good kick to her face, and um, that might decide the second round because Kiko was winning, I believe, with that one point. So um, maybe Stephanie's gotten that uh, ice cream is back, and she's going after it. And then she's got a little bit more confidence. Well, it's going to be a crazy third round, I have a feeling, here in this weight division. Oh, Kiko's coming back. Beautiful face kick. Kiko just, just won that round. I believe uh, even if the score is uh, tied, they're going to give it to Kiko. That was an excellent end. Okay, Lynette, uh, we're starting this third round now. It's been a back and forth uh, fight. Uh, I think uh, you uh, mentioned that Kiko might have the advantage. We are uh, up against the home, home field advantage here, so uh, I think whoever wins this third round is going to win the fight. Here we go. I think that's true. I think uh, Kiko looks like she's been the aggressor in the first round. In the second round for a while, she was slowing down, but she got that second win back, and she's timing her kicks, and she's getting in where she needs to, and she's picking her shots. And Stephanie's kicking a lot, but she's not picking her shots, and she's not scoring the points. And it's going to be difficult for Stephanie to come back from this. I think she's going to really have to kick in the face a couple of times to convince the referee she's winning and that she's the aggressor. Yeah, right now, even though um, Kiko just fell down there, I think that was just a reaction for it going backwards too fast. But Kiko's still picking her shots, and she's, she's doing very well. And she's going to win this fight, I believe. Well, it's been a good fight so far, and uh, we got about a minute and a half left, and uh, here they go. They're, uh, they're giving it their best. Stephanie's walking, and I think uh, that's when you're walking is that you can't run. That means you're tired. Uh, Kiko's still, still, as she goes back and goes forward, she has that little hop, and she's able to move. She's able to walk what Stephanie's doing, and she's able to kick those shots. And that's important in Taekwondo when you get tired, even when you're tired, to get that good shot in and not just throw your kicks. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the judges score this fight. Like I said, uh, home field advantage is starting to uh, play true here. Kiko just missed with a nice head level roundhouse there. In the corner, yeah, obviously they're not uh, in the same league that we were as heavyweights, Lynette. <laughs> That's true. That's true. As a heavyweight, I think uh, both people will be walking by now. But uh, Kiko still looks strong. And if I were a referee in the seat, you know, when it comes down to a tough decision, you look at the person who still looks strong at the end of the round, and Kiko does. Kiko looks like she still has it. And they're both tired, but Stephanie's not, um, she's kind of just walking in there and just doing something. Not knowing what, but she's going in there. Kiko just got a, she just got a kendo. I don't think that's gonna hurt her any. But um, she's still able to use that ring, and that's important, that ring management. She's still picking those shots, and she's not allowing Stephanie to throw her off, and that's good. Now they're in a kicking match here. They, they look good. They look very good, and as Fenway's, it's been a long time since we have a very strong Fenway division, and uh, they're both good. They're both good, and they both deserve it, whoever wins. Well, Kiko's been backing up a lot of the round, Lynette. I don't know how that's going to play into the judges' uh, judges' scoring. However, she is uh, 
been delivering the more uh, superior blows, in my opinion. Yeah, and she's been delivering them to the right places, and I think that's important. Um, they're both tired, and here's the end. And I'm, from my standpoint, I think that Kiko's winning, but we'll see what the referees pick. And the decision goes to Blue Kiko from Sacramento, gold medalist in the 1992 National Taekwondo Championships. Okay, here we go. Second round fight of a welterweight uh, division here, final between uh, Garth Cooley in uh, the red and uh, Adalberto Aro on the right. I'm here with Herb Perez, 1992 gold medalist in the middleweight division here. Herb, glad to have you aboard, and uh, what's your perceptions of the fight so far? Well, it looks like Garth is using a lot of his experience to uh, entertain Adalberto, but, you know, he's a young young player coming out for what looks like what might be his first national final, from what I can remember, and he certainly seems to have a lot of stuff going on, and he's giving Garth all he can handle. That's right. Now, Garth has got a lot of training experience. He's moved up from the lightweight division, where he was a national champion at one time, I believe, and a national contender several times, a team member. Uh, so he should have a lot of confidence. Uh, I don't know how he's going to handle the weight the weight game, but uh, obviously he's made the finals today, so he's fought well. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking Garth is normally a, a welterweight to start with, and he has to go down a lightweight. So I'm thinking he's a lot more comfortable here than most people would anticipate. Um, the power rule is certainly going to be a consideration. There's a difference in power between the welters and lights usually, but Garth doesn't seem to be having any problem with his final today. No, it's been a real exciting fight. Uh, the first round had a real good head kick by Garth. Beautiful back kick, beautiful back kick. Is that going to be a score, Herb? Yeah, that should be a score in addition to some of the stuff that he did the first round. I, I'm thinking that this may not even go to distance if uh, Mr. Adalberto keeps making the same mistakes. Here. Once again, we're in the welterweight final here. Uh, both these players are going to see each other again in two weeks in Chicago. Once, once again, uh, team trials are uh, middle of 12th of June, I believe, uh, 1993 for that world championship team. And uh, that's going to be a big weekend also. So, that was a nice face kick. What, what Garth should be doing here is controlling uh, Blue, and he certainly should be doing an education process here where he's showing him exactly what he can do and what will happen if he doesn't calm down a little bit like he's doing now. You know, Adalberto is attacking with a lot of gusto, but unfortunately a lot of gusto and a lot of attacks doesn't make a lot of experience. So Garth is certainly using his experience to his benefit. That's going to give him a lot of confidence going into that team trial uh, competition here, as I was stating earlier. So uh, Garth is clearly in command of the fight. Once again, Garth Cooley from Indiana in red. Adalberto Aro, 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 in blue. Well, here he goes. He still, you know, he still seems to be pretty game here. He seems to be wanting to give Garth, Garth all he can handle. Unfortunately, he may give Garth just a little bit too much, and Garth may end up just knocking him out as a result of it, because Garth is certainly capable of that. I've seen Garth knock out a number of contenders over the years, and there goes another attempt. Unfortunately, not as, uh, not as free as it could have been. Well, it's been a great day of fights. Uh, once again, the welterweight division showed some incredible speed and power today, and uh, it's accumulating in this final here. Oh, and that's a nice try with Potichuggy. And unfortunately, that's what uh, Adalberto finds himself doing, playing a lot of catch-up. Here with Herb Perez, uh, we're about to watch a welterweight final. Uh, once again, Herb is the 1992 gold medalist in the middleweight division from Barcelona, Spain. Let's go to the match, Herb. Well, here we go. We have a good match here between Garth Cooley and Alberto Arojo in uh, blue. And we certainly should have a fun, action-packed fight because both of these guys have a lot of tennis. Well, Herb, third round is beginning. Welterweight final. Garth Cooley in red is clearly a su the superior fighter, clearly in the lead. Uh, Adalberto is uh, going to really try to have to knock him out this round, isn't he? Here? Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, at the end of that round, it's got to be at least four to one or four to two in favor of Garth Cooley. And Garth, all he needs to do now is kind of sit on that lead and add up those defensive points, which it seems like he's ready to do. But you know, with Garth, you never can tell because he does like to get out there and fight a little bit, and at any time he's kind of dangerous. Well, here again, it's a frustrating situation for the blue player. He knows he's got to catch up, catch up, catch up, and he's only got a couple minutes left. Oh. There's a beautiful attempt at a back kick by Adalberto, but Garth obviously educates him again with the Potichegui to the body, which definitely would be a score. So it's looking more and more like Garth is increasing his lead, and Adalberto is playing more and more of a catch-up game. Well, I've enjoyed the, the welterweight fight here tonight, Herb, and uh, really glad to have you here to 
call a fight or two with us this tournament. Well, it's a lot of fun to be here. I mean, you know, it's uh, 1993, one year after the Olympics, and coming back and watching all the guys that are going to be filling the spots of the Olympians that have retired has certainly been a lot of fun. And, and Garth is hanging on there, and he definitely has a good chance at our world championships later this year in Madison Square Garden. We're expecting some good things for him with his increased weight, increased power. He certainly should be a contender for a world medal. And there's a nice attempt at an axe kick. Unfortunately, not as uh, productive as it could have been. But, well, out of birth, you got to give him a hand. He's still going after it. A lot of people by this point might have relaxed a little bit or thought it was a little bit too dangerous. But um, I'm guessing that out of birth, with his Latino spirit, is going to keep going till, it, till it's too late. Well, he's a game kid, and uh, I'll give him credit. Uh, once again, uh, both, both players are going to meet each other in two weeks. So, uh, uh, Alberto, I'm sure, is going to get back home in the gym and see if he can figure this uh, Garth Cooley character out. Yeah, he's going to have to because definitely at this point, you know, Garth has been taking this kid to school. He's definitely taking him and showing him what type of should look like. And he's just about showed him every possible counter for <laughs> every kick that he's thrown. Well, it's a nice attempt, though, but Garth is uh, definitely a smart competitor and... Uh, Finding down here, Herb, this welterweight final, uh, once again, you predict that uh, Garth is up about four or five to, to two, or maybe not even two. Yeah, not even maybe maybe not even two, but certainly he, Garth has got to have four or five on his side of the board. And you know, in a national level match, or certainly in an international level match, that's certainly a, a huge differential. It's not that easy to score points in this game, as I'm sure you remember from the days when you were competing this America. Well, Garth has done a darn good job of getting that foot on the hoagie, so uh, I have to I have to take my hat off to him. He's going to be the national champion here, and he's still lighting it up. He's trying to go out with style. It seems and, you know Garth Garth may be trying to get a knockout in these last couple of seconds, and it's certainly a good time because Alberto is coming and coming and coming, and as you know, that's probably one of the most dangerous times for a player because he's definitely open for a good counterattack and, and obviously a knockout if it's connected well. Yeah. Interesting attempt. He's kind of throwing everything he knows, including the kitchen sink. Well, well, up to the decision of the judges now. Okay, Herb, here we go. What's it going to be? I think it's got to be Garth Cooley. Anything less would surprise me. And I think Alberto knows. But he's going to stand there with a lot of dignity and a lot of pride. And the decision is for Garth Cooley. Not a surprise at that. Well, Garth, first of all, I have to congratulate you on the wonderful win again. And you certainly displayed a lot of technique. How many national championships is this for you? This is uh, would be 1986 all the way to 1993. That's wonderful. And you're hoping to win the team trials, obviously, and go on to the world championships. How do you feel about that? It's uh, a lifelong goal, sir. Yeah, and it seemed like Alberto, he was a game competitor, but he didn't seem to have much problems with him. Is that the case? Uh, pretty much. Uh, he is a very strong man, I can tell, and he's very fast. But unfortunately, I think he lacks a great deal of experience, and obviously your experience paid off here. Yes, sir, it did. Thanks again. Once again, good luck at the team trials. We hope to see you at the World Championship. Thank you very much, sir. Good job. Okay, big round of applause for our middleweight national. Good. 